Hey, it's Billy from Sweet Starling and today I'm potentially the most excited I've ever been over a video because I have just made a Crash Bandicoot's cake complete with TNT, Nitro, the question mark box, what is it going to be, and a coup, a coup, the best friend anyone could ever have. So I'm going to show you how to make all three cakes and your own a coup, a coup. So I shan't delay any further, here is how to make a Crash Bandicoot cake. So for this cake, I need three six inch square cubes. I've baked three 12 inch square cakes and cut each one of those into quarters and then sandwiched the layers together with some buttercream. Now I've crumb coated each of these cakes, put them in the freezer, brought them back out and iced each of them. Now I've hurried past this bit because I have a whole separate video on how to sandwich together a cake with buttercream, how to crumb coat it and how to ice it properly. So I'll link to that below. This video is more about the whole Crash Bandicoot style. So when each cake's come out of the freezer, I need to give it a rub of shortening to make sure the fondant sticks to the cake. And then I'm icing one in red for the TNT, one in green for the nitro, and one in brown for the question mark box. Will it be 10 apples? Will it be a life? We all hoped for a life, didn't we? 10 apples was good for the long term girl, but we won't have a life really. Jackpot. So I lay my fondant over each one, and I smooth with my smoothers and pinch my edges with my smoothers to make sharp corners. Again, this is in my how to ice a round and a square cake tutorial in way more detail, so click through to that if you want to see more specific instructions on how to actually ice the cakes. Then I needed to make some letters for my TNT and my nitro. So I just had these delivered. They are Push Easy Cutters by Cakestar and they're awesome. They're much, much bigger than normal cutout letters. So that's what I use to make my TNT and my nitro. When I had these delivered, I've got the, the uppercase set, the lowercase set, and the number set, so three big boxes. Do you remember when you were a kid at Christmas and you just get big boxes, don't you? It's always like really cool toys inside them. It was like having Christmas as a kid again, because as you get older, you know, your gloves like, you get gloves and they're wrapped up in a small package. You might get, where else you get Christmas? A voucher, small envelope. Don't get big boxes like this anymore. I don't, anyway. So that was extra exciting, it was in a big box. So I coloured some flour paste, a bright yellow colour, I used melon sugar flare paste colour, rolled it out really thinly and then used my Push Easy Cutter set to cut out TNT and Nitro. Now the letters are quite large, so for TNT it's fine to fit across the cake. For Nitro, it would have to be really, really, really squished in to fit across the cake. So I improvised. Do you remember the Nitro crates? Boink. They like boink. As you're getting closer to it, they're bounce, just to let you know they are really, they're ready to go. So I thought the lettering was a bit up and down, just sort of gives the, the bounce feeling, like the letters are jibbing about the place. Resourceful, eh? Now above and below the letters, I needed yellow lines. For that, I just rolled out my yellow flower paste and then used a ruler to mark across in centimetre sections. I did that at the top and at the bottom lined up my centimetre sections and then came down with a large knife and or a scalpel depending on how it was cutting, cut out my strips and I just used a little bit of water painted on the back of each letter and each strip to stick them onto the sides of my cake. Once my letters and my stripes were on I needed to do some stripes on my brown cake. Now these ones have got crossover stripes in the middle and stripes around the outside so the crossover stripes are wider than the thinner stripes they were a centimetre, no they weren't, the thicker stripes were two centimetres and the thinner stripes were a centimetre. So the thick ones I've just crossed over straight through in the middle and then the thin ones I've lined around each edge of each side of my box and the top of the box. For the question mark I went onto Word, typed a question mark, made it really big and printed it out and used that as a template. Now a coup a coup. He is made of modelled chocolate and wafer paper. Modelling chocolate I've got a recipe for and a tutorial for you can make it using either chocolate or candy melts. I've used both here and you will probably be able to see the video the difference between both. I love using candy melts because you get the instant colour you have got to spend time actually colouring your chocolate but they have a much lo lower melting temperature than chocolate so when you're working with them they get really hot and really sticky and kind of slimy instantly so there's not much room for movement at all with that whereas a chocolate will stay very strong and tough and you've got quite a bit more time to work with it and um, it's a bit easier to work with if you keep the candy melt stuff chilled if, so if it gets a bit sticky put it in the fridge and keep it chilled it'll be fine but you will see the difference so for this I have made a template of a Kua Kua who's the best friend a bandicoot could ever have. Got us through all kinds of trouble, didn't they? So I've printed a template, cut it out, put it on my brown modelling chocolate and cut around the outside. And then I've modelled my other sections on top of the template. So I started with the eyes, made them roughly the right size, stuck them to my chocolates, and then I did the green sections underneath these eyes. I don't know what they are, bad eye bags. And then I moved to the teeth, which I made from flower paste. I used a rectangle cutter I had that happened to be the right width for the teeth on the template 
and I just cut that in half and then trimmed it down for the bottom teeth. So I stuck all the teeth on and then put the mouth around the outside. And then I worked on the nose, which is a very pointy, long nose. And then I moved on to the chunky eyebrows, quite in fashion right now, aren't they? And most of this stuff stuck without needing any water, but if you find that it does need some water, just add a little bit and then stick your bits on. If everything's getting a bit soft, just put it in the fridge for 10 minutes, let it all chill and firm up. Chocolate's really good like that, modern chocolate's really good like that. It will chill and it will pretty much solidify and it doesn't get sticky like fondant does when it comes up the fridge either. For the feathers, I have used wafer paper. I have painted water onto one side of it and then put a 26 gauge wire in it, folded the wafer paper over so that where the water wafer paper is wet, it's gonna dissolve a little bit and stick to it with the wire inside. You can then cut around the wire into a feather shape and then trim little bits out to make it a bit more feathery, a bit more texture. And then I have used paste colors and the vodka that we use for painting the parting, Spiritus Rectus pick a wainy, you can say it now, to paint the feathers all different colours. So I've got melon for the yellow, tangerine apricot for the orange, and then they're both sugar flare, sugar flare sky blue for the blue, and then this one is rainbow dust pro gel in pink. Pink. And I needed a support in the mask to be able to stick it into the cake and hold it there. So I've used a skewer, gone through the middle and twisted it through up as high as I could get. And then that is what I can push it into the cake with. For the green beard, I put it over the template, trimmed some bits out and then reshaped it with my hands so it didn't look like a big, long, stringy, sort of dangerous spike beard. It looked like nice foliage, a kuwaku beard. Now to put the cake together, I have used some bubble straws in both the bottom tiers as a bit of support and then set the top tier on top and then pushed a kuwaku straight into the cake. I just lifted his foliage beard forward and hung it over the edge, hung it over the corner of the cake. So that is how to make a Crash Bandicoot cake. Don't forget there is a link below through to the blog with full instructions where you can buy the bits to make this cake and a very detailed video tutorial on how to actually ice the cakes to begin with if you need that. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. There'll be brand new videos every single Monday. I'll see you next week. Bye.